Okay, guys, Doc Ock is back with a quick romp through radio revision. Dr. Ock is not affiliated with Marvel Studios or its parent, the Walt Disney Company. For more information, please call 555 Don't Sue. Okay, I'm going to go right ahead and talk about media convergence, public service broadcasting, and the popular Radio 4 soap opera, The Archers. Convergence means coming together. Um, not that kind. In the same way that two rivers might join together to make something bigger and better, technology has allowed old media and new media to merge, with advantages and benefits to both. In the 1950s, audio was recorded and stored on reels of tape like these. Because the tape and the playback units were really expensive, not to mention huge, if people wanted to listen to what had been recorded, they needed one of these. And they could only listen at the times the show was being broadcast. It took until the 1980s before the technology to record radio shows became cheap enough to be widely available. Pocket Rockers, play them here, wear them anywhere. Flash forward to the 1990s and the digital era. In this time, it was possible to record and store audio on one of these, a digital file. That could be played on one of these, 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 these. It also meant that audio files and radio shows could be put onto one of these. And the two technologies, radio and the internet, began to converge. As more and more files became digital, more and more old media programs, like radio shows, began to move into new media spaces, like websites. This is what convergence is. When two different types of media merge and work closely together for the benefit of both. A good example of this can be found in the radio show The Archers. In the past, The Archers used to be broadcast on radio at set times. It was repeated to give audiences the chance to catch up. But if you miss the repeats, you miss the show. But when radio, an example of old media, merged with the internet, an example of new media, it brought benefits to both. The Archers was able to offer more opportunities for audiences to catch up with episodes they might have missed, and the internet also gave the show chances to engage with its audience in different ways that were not possible on the radio, such as through online quizzes, blogs, character biographies, podcasts, and clips of some of the show's best moments. He tried to destroy my best friend and he's still doing it! Offering such a variety of ways for audiences to interact is important for the BBC as it is a public service broadcaster. Public service broadcasting means that the BBC has to reach out to a wide variety of audiences and produce shows that do more than just entertain people. In fact, the requirement to inform educate and entertain is written into the BBC's charter and is a fundamental part of its identity. In return for its public service broadcasting, the BBC receives a chunk of the licence fee, meaning it doesn't have to show any commercial adverts at all. Causing dick splinters and discoloration. But with Schaefer's dick sealant, my dick stays a nice golden brown colour. But the Archer's website does more than just allow the BBC to fulfil its public service broadcasting remit. It allows the BBC to engage with its audience in different ways. To understand some of these ways, we can use the uses and gratifications theory developed by Blumler and Katz. The theory states that audiences use media products in different ways and they get different things out of the media products that they do use. You might interact with something purely for entertainment value. <laughs> I told you they'd do it. <laughs> or to find out about something. And I'm sorry for the things we simply didn't get right, and also sorry for the way that this matter has been handled. Or because it's a deep part of who you are. So watch out for those weirdos. <laughs> we are the weirdos, mister. Or simply because everyone else is doing it and you want to join in the conversation. But which two couples will face the dance-off tonight? The results are in. As well as being a soap opera, The Archers was originally created to educate the British farming community and inform them about new developments in farming. Here we have two different uses, entertainment and surveillance. But the show's frequent engagement with topical hot-button issues like modern slavery and teen pregnancy... Oh, I feel sick. Not because I'm pregnant, even though I am pregnant. Not to mention, more recently, the cost of living crisis and animal cruelty... Well... 
Apparently, the cost of living crisis is leading to a huge rise in people abandoning their pets. Oh, yes. Also allow audiences to identify with the show and see their values being explored. This thing's I believe. Uh, can we accept that? Woohoo! This is an example of social identity. And if we reach back into the 1950s, when 12 million households owned a radio and listening to the radio was the main form of media entertainment, we can imagine conversations the next day around the water cooler and washing lines about what had happened in last night's episode. No, it's not radar or a new style television aerial. You fix it in your garden and turn the handle, keep on turning and see what comes. This fulfills the social relationships angle of uses and gratifications. And it doesn't stop there. The convergence of radio with the internet in the form of the Archer's website allows audiences to follow the blog with behind the scenes information on their favourite characters, engage with other listeners through Twitter and Facebook to discuss favourite moments, prove their love for the show by taking an online quiz, or simply find more entertaining content. In short, the convergence of radio and online has enabled the show to reach larger audiences and to fulfil more of its public service broadcasting remit than would have been possible for radio alone. Not bad for something that's 72 years old, eh?